Hello, in this video we're going to have a look at how to insert data into a MySQL table using PHP. So the process here for inserting is the same one that you would go through for a search or any other kind of query. So right here we're looking at my XAMPP control panel. I'm working from XAMPP. I, th I can't recommend using a tool like XAMPP enough if you are just learning how to work with, uh, with PHP and, and database. It's, it's very much simplified, it's a good development environment. So what I want to do is I want to show you, if you click on admin, it will pop up your PHP My Admin, and I'm just trying to show you what I've got going on here. So I've got a database called Cheeseball, has that root user, which is the default in all XAMPP uh, databases. I've got a table called Cheese, and the Cheese table looks like this. It's got an ID, which is a primary key, and it auto increments. I've got a name, and I've got an age. So that's my table. So I'm going to insert a couple rows into this table in this database. So now you understand what we're interfacing with. Let's have a look at the script. So this is my connect script right here. Um, I already have videos on connect scripts. I have a couple of them. So that's kind of what that looks like. You've got to have a valid connect script before you want to do anything with your underlying table. So localhost, root, no password. That's the default in XAMPP. That's that database name. So on to the, uh, let's, let's get to the, let's get down to business. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is create a variable. You can call it what you want. I'm going to call it SQL because it is SQL. You can call it whatever you want. And it's just going to be a big string. It's pretty easy to make mistakes right here. So I'm going to just write some SQL. If you don't know SQL, it's pretty easy to learn the basics of it. So I want to say insert. So all SQL keywords are in caps. That is just a convention. You don't have to do it. Into cheese. And then in parentheses, I'm going to say the field names that I want to insert. So those were name and age. And then I say values. And then in parentheses, the things that I want to insert. So like, uh, let's do Chucky. And notice the back ticks. Eh, Chicky, that's fine too. Uh, and I don't know, three. Uh, that's so back tick, sorry, back tick three. So that is SQL. That's probably valid. If it's not, which it's not, I'll show you how to figure that out in a minute here. So that's just good old fashioned SQL. If you don't know SQL, you can't write SQL. And then the other part of this is, so another variable, typically this variable is called result. It's going to be whatever this query results in. Some queries return mean meaningful data, like a select would, but an insert doesn't return a whole lot. So I'll say uh, result equals my SQLI underscore query. Then in parentheses, the first thing I'm going to pass is the DBC. The second thing I'm going to pass is the SQL. Right, this is the easy line. Uh, once you've got a connect script, you you write that part's in order. And so that's the part where you're going to have mistakes. Now the other part I want to do just to help myself out here is I'm going to have an or die statement. Always a good idea when you're interfacing with a database and I'll say bad query. All right, so I save and well, actually let me show you the other thing that I like to do. Let me do a little echo right here and I'll say good query. Now the way that an or die works is that uh, if e either this, sorry, either that or that is going to be successful. If this is not successful, it's going to say bad query. Uh, die means don't go any further, right? Do not progress past line seven. So the only way you get to line nine is by the die not happening. So that just kind of proves that it happened, worked successfully. So I'm going to head over to my script. I refresh and it says bad query. All right, it's really easy to make mistakes when you're just writing SQL like that. I mean, that's a pretty simple query. You can write some really ugly queries. So a trick that I would always recommend is don't just write bad query because that, does, that doesn't help a whole lot. What I like to do is bad query, uh, colon, and then I put SQL in there. Now, because I use double quotes, I'm able to put variable names in there. And what this is going to do is now it's just going to improve our error message because it's your job to debug it. And there's my query. All right, so insert into cheese, name, age, values. So what I like to do now is let's say that you, sometimes you can just see what the error is when you're looking at it. Well, let's say that you can't. What I like to do is I'll copy this and I head to my PHP my admin. I click on the SQL tab and then I paste that thing that I just copied right here because this is the only way you're going to be able to get any meaningful debugging feedback. And I run the query and it says table cheeseball.cheese doesn't exist. 
So this is the really the only tool that you have available to you to help you troubleshoot what's wrong with your query. And at this point, I go, oh, I spelled cheese with a Z for some reason. So I realize that that's my mistake. I rewrite the original query, save, head on over to my page, refresh, and it says good query. Now, right, since I'm seeing that good query message that came from here, I can assume that this probably worked. So I'm gonna delete that. And there's only one way to really test this, and that is to head on over to my uh, admin tool. I browse, and there's Chicky 3. If you want to see it work one more time, let's do also do Chucky. And Chucky is uh, 43, and I save that. Head on over to my, this is my script. I refresh. Notice once I pulled out that little echo, there's literally no feedback. So you're just crossing your fingers and hoping that no error message means that something good's happening. If I wanted to check that out, let me browse that table again, and there's Chucky. Right, that's pretty unsettling that just seeing absolutely nothing on the screen means that it's working, but that is in fact how it works. You're not gonna create a script that doesn't have any output, but uh, on its own, just by default, a script like this isn't gonna generate any output. So that is how to insert rows into a table using PHP. Uh, the same kind of process is, is also the case for like a select, but uh, when you're pulling information out of a database or a table, then you have to, the next thing you have to do is display it. And so we're not doing that right here, but uh, this is the general process for querying my SQL table with PHP. I hope this helped you to better understand the process. Thanks for watching.